And we're recording. Hi, everybody. Hey. Uh, welcome to uh, my co-author series. Uh, today, I am here with my uh, co-author and aggressive muse, uh, Christopher L. Smith. Hi, Chris. Hey, Casey. What's going on, man? Not much. Not much. I haven't gotten to talk to you in so long. I know. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> and we totally didn't just spend 30 Half minutes an hour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we might have had a little pre-show pre-show <laughs> con conversation session. So, so um, but I don't, don't I worry. don't know if you ever saw news radio way back when, but huh. uh, I, I'm trying to remember his name. I think it's uh, Stephen Root was the was the owner. But whenever the camera turned on when he did an interview, he was like, "Hi, everybody, how are you today <laughs> in our lovely office?" And then the camera would turn off. He'd be like, "Man." All right, we need to get this, this, and this, and this, and this done. It's just like, you know, perfectly fine. And then <laughs> camera's on. It's like, and here we are at the station with our crew. So, <laughs> That's funny. Oh. I was I was trying not to be deer in the headlights when you when you hit record. when sorry. I said that we're recording. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I got a new chair and it's a little bit too narrow for my butt. So I'm gonna be sliding around. <laughs> Some days it'd be like that, man. <laughs> when I sat in it before I bought it. I was like, yeah, this is nice. No. <laughs> right on out. Tilt the wrong way, slide right on the floor. So, yeah. which beats Sorry, the bro. other chair I had, which just slowly sank over about <laughs> it's 30 like the seconds. Quick there. Yeah. It's like, Chris, where are you going? I'm here. I'll be back. Just give me a sec. <laughs> the elevator's broken. And I'm back. Yeah. <laughs> that was last year during Liberty Con when we were doing that. I kept everybody's like why do you keep leaning forwards like i'm adjusting my chair <laughs> so you know, be like yeah you know it was really great working with john on the book that we were doing and the thing you know and then, no, no i really can't wait to see everybody at dragon con this year this is great so, excuse oh, me for man. having to reenact that but... that was perfect that was that was beautiful so yeah so... this is much much nicer chair uh, friends, as you can tell, uh, Chris Smith and I have no, no, no issues finding random crap to discuss. <laughs> so uh, all the time. Um, but uh, um, real quick, Chris, please yes. introduce Sorry. yourself to my friends and fans on this channel. Who are uh, you? My name is Chris Smith, Christopher Smith. Uh, professionally, Christopher L. Smith, because it sounds really important. But uh, everybody's called. Well, there might be a few other Christopher Smiths out in the world. There Maybe. is one that I know of, and he and I on Goodreads have gone back and forth because it's like, dude, your your book keeps getting listed and my name. I'm sorry, he's like, <laughs> I can't see it. It's like, <sighs> okay, he's nonfiction. He's like a medical writer. It's like, yeah, but you're getting a lot of credit for zombie fiction right now, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, um. That's like the author equivalent of of getting someone else's like m email military emails. Right. So. <laughs> oh, look, HIPAA information. Ooh, oh. That's not good. So oh, that anyway, emailed, thankfully, probably for that reason. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I am Christopher L. Smith. Um, God, where, how do you, where do we start? Okay, what do I do? I apparently make bad jokes and um, kind of goof off a lot, but mm -hmm. I also occasionally write. Mm -hmm. And I got started more or less in 2012, 2013. And then I met Casey at DragonCon and she said, we're friends now. And I said, okay. <laughs> <laughs> It didn't exactly great, go like that, did it? It was a lot like that, Casey. <laughs> <laughs> it was a lot like that. I remember, comes to we, I remember we sat at a table together for um, uh, for Meat Faucet, which is yeah. Michael Z. Williamson's name for the um, Brazilian, Brazilian steakhouse. Steakhouse, yeah. Yep. I want to call it Chiaroscuro, but that's something else. <laughs> no, <laughs> wrong country. <laughs> also, that has to do with light, so never mind. Ah, but <laughs> I, I, I actually think that, I, correct me, and I'll probably get this wrong, but I think it's Chiarosco. Something like that, yeah. 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 So that's probably wrong. I probably just said someone's mom's a. No. Okay, cut that part. That. Cut that part. <laughs> um, in, in, in Portuguese, but uh, yeah, so. <laughs> Mark the time right there to right there. Uh, so, yeah. But anyway, so yes, we, we we sat near each other, close to each other, next to each other at the Brazilian steakhouse. And then and you I met was, Easy too, because he was and there. And I also got to meet Easy. So yeah. 
yeah and i think he and i were joking around and it's like okay this guy's all right and uh okay. in case he was being her usual quiet reserved self mm -hmm. you know very withdrawn very shy mm -hmm. <laughs> passive even <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry, this was my first Dragon Con that I had gone to. So I, I was literally like, wow, man, everything yeah. going on. Um, my father-in-law and my mother-in-law had gifted me with tickets and uh, they were also at the uh, at the steakhouse. So it was you and I and John and uh, Williamson, of course, and, and I think Weber was there too, a bunch of, bunch of writers. And I'm just kind of like fanboying around because um, this is like the second convention I'd been to in my life. And, to be uh, fair, this was a large party, and we were right. like at the end of the kids' table. <laughs> true, <laughs> true. It's the kids' table being, you know, forty and under <laughs> at the time, because this was ten years ago. So, <laughs> like, oh, you're thirty-five. Yeah, kids' table. <laughs> kids' table, right? Yeah. Yeah. The, the yeah. adults are going to sit over here. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Turn my little green thing over. Give me some more meat. I'll just sit here and, and you know, <laughs> listen to the, the adults have their conversation. Right. So meanwhile, like Easy and I are like, hey, what kind of beer are you drinking? Oh, yeah. 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 So um, I remember, you know, we, we stepped outside and you were, we were talking. I didn't know you were pregnant at the time. So I got to uh, I got to meet your daughter before everybody else. <laughs> sort of. <laughs> that didn't sound right. No. Um, let's just go ahead and cut that part and that part. <laughs> there go ahead and mark the time and uh yeah oh, we'll edit that right out <laughs> <laughs> Stu, <laughs> mark the tape Stu. <laughs> um so yeah and then uh we started talking and then that year uh let's see so that would have been i believe 2012 yeah in 2013 yeah, born in 13 so and then yeah. in 2013, um, there's a, a whole story about how Doc and I ended up talking, hanging out with John in Dallas. Yeah. Uh, Doc Walrad, for those of you who don't know who he is, um, find us at a con. We'll we'll regale you with the tale. It takes a yeah. little bit to get through, and it takes both of us. Um, so we we ended up hanging out with John for a weekend, and this was right after Black Tide Rising had gotten released, the first one, I believe. And then um, I had just kind of he and I were outside smoking. I was like, you know, one of these days, I think I'm going to write a story for you. And I, I, I have an idea and blah, blah, blah. And he goes, okay, tell me what you got. So and at this point, I'd known John for two years. Um, Casey had already done an anthology with John at this point. And you wrote Light for mm -hmm. Citizens. 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 Yep. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm, I'm BSing with John for a little bit. About six months later i get an email from him and says hey do you want to write a story for me i'm like yes mm -hmm. sure and casey at this point had she and i had been talking more and more she goes get like a a message or an email from casey it says hey guess what john john asked me to be in his next anthology like, yeah. me too, me too, me too. yeah i do remember that it was over yeah. facebook it was like the old facebook messenger right yeah. yeah it's like oh, me too oh my god that's so awesome yeah that's so yeah. awesome yeah so then we see each other at liberty con the next year in case he's like i already finished my story i'm like ah, that's great <laughs> <laughs> how's yours coming i've got some done <laughs> and uh we ended up talking it, mm -hmm. th th this becomes a trend by the way case is like hey how's it going with the story it's like <laughs> i'll send you what i have <laughs> How many words is it supposed to be? Ten thousand. Oh, how many you got? Four. Oh, four thousand. <laughs> four <laughs> words. <laughs> four words. <laughs> but they're really, really good. They're super good words. Highly polished sentence. Yes. Highly polished yeah. sentence. They're the right words. <laughs> the, the the exact right words that I need to use. And yeah. uh, so you know, Casey, Casey, and so send me what you got, and I start looking around at it. And she kicks back for, she goes, okay, that's good. This is great. This is, this needs work. Um, I don't think that, eh, okay, I can see where you're going with that. How about this? And then we'll start kicking ideas around. So Casey and I started talking almost every night for mm -hmm. a couple hours a night. And she drugged me kicking and screaming at the end of my story. <laughs> and uh, we ended up going to, we, we turned it in. 
the next year we're at Liberty Con, and I want to say this is like 14 or 15 at this point. Mm-hmm. And this was Casey's first Liberty Con. So she and I had a, uh, a reading together. We split mm-hmm. an hour, 30 minutes each. And she read, um, God, it, was it two set? I know you read your Black Tide story mm-hmm. with the uh, the gas station. I remember the, I think that was the scene that you did. And then I did um, one of my scenes, but I cannot remember if we did anything else aside from those two scenes. We did Shada. We, we did. Both, That's right. We were both in the um, Shada anthology. Um, That's right. Which had just come out, I think. Yeah. I'm trying to remember. What, inked. Was it Inked? Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, yep. the one about tattoo. Yeah, it was Inked. So Copper Dog Publishing is a, um, is a micro press that, that publishes a series of books centered around this event called the Shada, which is um, like every 10,000 years, you know, the portal to hell open. And, 48 uh, hours. For 48, 48 hours. hours yeah. to the apocalypse. That's right. That's right. And because I wrote, I read about my, um, my stripper succubus character. That's right. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. That was it. Yeah. Yep. And then, and you wrote about, or you wrote about and read a scene from um, your, uh, your badass army sergeant. At the Alamo, right? That's right. Uh, yeah. No, she was close. Uh, for yeah. Sam. For Sam. Sam. She never it made was... it to the Alamo. But right. Yeah, that was that was I, that was a good story. That was fun. And um, so, yeah. It is a good story. Thank you. So Casey brought bikers, truckers, and law enforcement and former SEALs to tears with her story. And um, I got them to laugh. So that worked. That worked yeah. out really well. It was a good dynamic. That was a good reading. That was fun. That was because I remember reading. we were at the we were at the Chattanooga Choo Choo and we were yeah. in the the train car. Right. Was the room that we had for the reading. So that was kind of cool because it was this old it was this old. So for those of you who are not familiar, uh, the Chattanooga Choo Choo um, was a hotel. I think now it's like condos or something, but it was a hotel that was set on the. Um... I'm still here. Okay. I'm I'm sorry. It just occurred to me that I have a copy of the original. Oh yeah. Okay. Everybody cool. see that? Um, it's glaring in the light. There is that a little better. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So Should that's I, that's the one that kicked it off. So right. that series right there, freeze frame, and look that one up. Uh, it's a great series of anthologies. I'll put a link in the um, description to this Good video, idea. so you guys can see that. Um, but yeah. Um, let me make a note so that I can put a link in the description. But the yeah, note. so the Chattanooga Choo Choo, it, it, it was a hotel that was built on the historic um, train station in Chattanooga. Um, and <clears throat> um, Liberty Con was held there for many years um, until they, I don't know if they changed owners or it got sold or, or whatever, something about it changed and they went, they're no longer a hotel. Now they're like apartment condos. Um, yeah. Where people live. So Unfortunately, the convention can't be held there anymore, which is kind of a bummer because it was a fantastic convention space. And it was right. super cool because certain certain panel rooms were actually held in. Some of the hotel rooms were actually like converted train cars. And then there were other rooms that were like conference rooms that were also train cars. And that was one of the rooms that we had our um, our reading in. It was very cool. So yeah, we had, um, we had at least, I, I want to say between 20 and 40 people in there. It was, we had it was a kind lot of, hard of people to see. for first time writers. Yeah. I think we were somewhat notorious just because we knew so many people. I think um, right. Because you, you and I, one of the things that you and I share is we're both pretty significant extroverts, especially in the con environment. And we just like adopt everybody and you're going to be my friend and come to my <laughs> meeting and let's hang out. And, you know, Hey, you person hey, that you. I've never met before. Yeah. You look yeah. like someone that should be over here talking. That's to right. <laughs> that's right. Um, uh, yeah. So that's, you know, I, I, I know we, we shanghaied a few, <laughs> a few, a few. unsuspecting individuals oh, yeah. into coming yeah. to our, our readings. So. Including our kids. I think all three <laughs> of our kids, my, my yeah. two girls and your, and your oldest were there as yeah. well. Yeah. And the, they, they looked kind of bored at first and then they got, they were like, Oh, okay. This is kind of cool. I think, yeah. I think we yeah. kind of went up a couple of notches there. Yeah. Although so. Corey, I do remember Corey saying that, you know, she was like, <laughs> it's a little uncomfortable to hear my mom reading about a stripper. <laughs> I can understand, but it wasn't an autobiography. 
geography. Right, so, right. I mean, so the funny part is it wasn't is, my time as a stripper. Right. It was <laughs> right. This is right. a stripper. Yeah, of course. I don't know if you know this, but I make shit up, kid. Like <laughs> I'm a fiction writer. <laughs> what i'm supposed to do it's kind of my thing <laughs> well what was funny about that though too was that uh, do you remember after liberty con for that trip we went to um what was it called ruby falls is that what it's called yeah yeah and that yeah. was really fun um it it was like it's like a course. yeah it was like a, a outdoor like ropes course and stuff um and we did it with the girls and at one point i was like cro like there were these like vertical poles <laughs> um, that had like like little tiny blocks at the bottom and you had and they were just hanging you had to cross from one to another to get across and I remember Corey yelling out use those stripper skills mom and I was like oh I don't have any stripper skills I just write about them <laughs> it's, it's not first hand <laughs> right. I'm a fiction writer <laughs> so I mean if you really wanted to like get her back for that you know you could have immediately turned around and said something like that's only for your dad dear and then just had her <laughs> turn beat red yeah <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah so yeah. that was a good trip that was a good trip that was uh that was the year before we got tagged for um for gunpowder yes if yes. i remember right i think that was mm -hmm. 15 so i had my 15 my 14 or 13 at that point uh and then you had coriel who I mean, is she falls in between i think she's younger than maddie yes she's younger than maddie oh Cory, yeah 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 so she's a year but she's a year younger than maddie yeah that's right yeah. so my 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 two are older than than your oldest but yeah they kind of they kind of clumped they they formed yeah. a little clump of, of kids and yeah. ran around and did stuff and that was fun so. And then, and then, yeah, and then Griff's kid joined in too. Right, Isabel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I don't know if we're supposed to be naming names. Sorry, Griff. <laughs> <laughs> I figured you put her name on Facebook. It's okay. Yeah. Cut it if I'm wrong. We'll Edit do. that part out. We'll do. Yeah. <laughs> don't get yeah, no, Griff was... mad at me. He knows people. <laughs> <laughs> Griff is scary all <sighs> on his own, man. No. I mean, he's awesome. I love the man, well, but yeah. yeah. He'll just call me and he'll hit me with that voice. Chris, I'm very disappointed in you. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even do the Griff voice, but it's like, it, it's scary cop voice without being scary cop voice. But then yeah. it's just like a subtle tone shift. And now all of a sudden it's like <clears throat> a sexy Griff. Well, I, yeah, it's exactly. Like, oh my God, I'm ovulating and I don't have any. <laughs> I, I remember when we met, uh, I think like the, the third thing I said directly to him uh, when we met, like we shut down this dude that was being an ass or he shut down this dude that was being an ass. Um, and then like the second thing that I said to him directly was like, um, I'd like to go find a phone book real quick and have you read that to me if that'd be OK. <laughs> I'm just going to need you to do that. <laughs> no, no. Go slower. <laughs> <laughs> the dude's got a great voice. He's got a great voice. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, yeah. So. So anyway, that's uh, that's uh, that's our our past. Um, you mentioned gunpowder, so obviously this is a series. Of... We did forget to mention one thing though. So oh. it, one of those one of those late night Facebook things. It's like all of a sudden I get, hey, we're writing partners now. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, that's because we were okay. both working on. Well, so the reason for that was because we were both working on our our black tide stories at the same yeah, time. Yeah. No, no, yeah. I know, I know. And it I was, was like, just, okay, it was cool. just like, is... hey. Chris, it's me, Casey. We're writing partners now. <laughs> it makes sense best in my head. Friends, just in case you weren't aware, it's like cool. It's like <laughs> being adopted. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So right. this, is um, this is the thing. This is the thing that happens. <laughs> I think it was 16, 2016 that we that we got tagged yes. for gunpowder. Yep. Yeah. So that also came about as at Liberty Con. So one of the my favorite things about Liberty Con is is these things that sort of spontaneously happen. You know, um, for those of you who are not familiar, I will put a link in the description. But Liberty Con is a science fiction fantasy convention um, that's held in Chattanooga, Tennessee, every year, and it is one of it is intentionally very small. Um, it's capped at a thousand people, um, and it's sold out for this year, unfortunately. But uh, fortunately, unfortunately. Um, but um, 
it is very heavy with professionals, right? Most most of the atten attendees are actually professionally engaged in the writing and publishing business in some capacity or another, whether they're a writer, an editor, an artist, uh, something, right? It's right. very pro heavy. Um, so it's, it's great from a networking perspective, but it's also really cool from a creativity perspective because these things happen every year there. I find myself in a situation where it's probably late at night. I'm sitting around with a bunch of people. We're just hanging out and somehow we start generating ideas and we start these brainstorming like sessions and it's just like bounce idea, bounce idea, bounce idea, bounce idea. And Chris and I ended up in one of those with, um, John Ringo and, um, Gary Poole and, um, um, Nathan Valiant was there and, uh, there was a couple of other people, you know, kind of coming and going and stuff, but we were just sitting there, um, outside. I, I, I think it was on, on, um, John's little patio deck thing, if I recall correctly, um, sitting there outside, people are smoking, you know, drinking beverages and we're just talking and brainstorming and that led. And it started <laughs> off as, you know, you know, it'd be really funny. If da, yeah. da, 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 oh no, actually it started off as do you we started off talking about black tie yeah. and why John's wife Miriam is a, does not like the zombie genre. And it, right. it turned into, well, here's what she doesn't like about it because of this. Well, mm -hmm. what if this happened? Well, what if this happened? And the next thing I know, it's two hours later, and we have a plot for mm -hmm. a, a zombie apocalypse, not necessarily zombie apocalypse book. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of little jokes in there and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, it's like, you know, it's, it's the rapture and the only, the only one guy out of the 82nd battalion or 82nd airborne is, is left or is gone. Everybody else is like, where'd he go? Yeah. <laughs> Where'd everybody else go? Why aren't we? Oh, because <laughs> we're the 82nd airport yeah that was john. it was our designated driver god damn it. i thought john was gonna hurt himself laughing as he, he was, was like telling us this that whole time that was pretty oh, yeah. funny he yeah. was dying yeah. uh so yeah but as casey was saying that led to uh this book it's not right. the book that we had hashed out nope. but it <laughs> is it is the book that we were um offered not mm -hmm. i'm not gonna say asked i'm not gonna say given but we were offered the opportunity to mm -hmm. get a hold of this this little masterpiece here mm -hmm. and write yeah and write this book with john so yeah. um so this is gunpowder and embers um you uh if you're watching the channel you're probably already familiar but if not please go check it out um it came out 20 last was it last not this past december but the december before right December. I want to say it came out December 2019. No, that's not right. That's that's not right, is it? I don't know. I think so. It's like I could look. Anyway. <laughs> I have a copy. I could so. look I I could look in the uh yeah, I have one downstairs too. Hang on. Um, I got one right here. <laughs> I'm in my office. You can't see my bookshelves, but I have I have two bookshelves that are are full of books left, right, up, down, sideways back to front six ways to Sunday yeah. and um I, and I can't turn my computer screen to show you but uh, yeah it's 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 a mess so that's maybe, why you're not getting to see it but maybe you're right maybe it yeah. did come out in 19 because the paper books the paperbacks already out uh -huh. Everyone, yeah. oh, I, I just gave one of those away today so yeah uh well, come to find out the guy that <clears throat> I was working with 2019 there it is yeah oh yeah, I, 2019, I, I um, but yeah, so, um, so it's been out for a little while, um, did fairly but well. COVID kind of fucked it. things up. So yeah. Yeah. Like right before yeah, it came out right before. Yep. That's true. Yeah. So, um, but I don't know. I like it. I'm, I, you know, I was happy with it. Um, I like it. I like it. Yeah. I, I, it is the story of, I, I think there's, I'll be honest. I I've, I've had this conversation with a couple people. And they're like, well, and they were hesitant because they're my friends to say, you know, criticize or whatever. I said, look, if you want to say it, I know there's flaws. I think it's solid. I don't think Tony would ever let us put anything out that wasn't solid. I do think it's flawed. And they're not huge flaws. I think there's flaws that we can correct. But I think I'll be honest and say that I know I know that there's a few few flaws in there. Well, and the truth is. I think that's always going to happen. Like yeah. you, every time you write a book, you level up, right? Mm -hmm. So 
every subsequent book, you look back at your previous work and you're like, oh, I could have done that better. I could have done that better. I could have done that better. You know, um, I mean, this this came out in 19, but we 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 finished drafting significantly before that. And, you know, in that time, we, we've had lots of other stuff come out. So. Oh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's that's an interesting point about. Um, you know, sort of a, a writer's progression throughout throughout the series. And well, I think some, you know, a lot of times with in indie, in the indie world, um, there's such a, uh, such an emphasis on rapid release because it's a, it's a solid business strategy um, yeah. and it, you know, keeps the momentum going and, and it kind of stacks the sales that way. So it's a, it's a great way to go. Um, but it, I think it, it probably also has the, I don't know if it's a benefit or a, a drawback, um, but it has the effect of kind of minimizing that change because in order to do a rapid release, a writer is usually writing everything like all right at once. It's not. It's got to be. Yeah. Over. It's got to go, go, go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I noticed that with my own psyche series, right? Like with, you know, I, I love book one. I'm proud of, of Minds of Men. Um, but if I went back and rewrote it today, mm -hmm. there, there's a few things that I would do fairly significantly differently well That's and, and me, but you know what i'm saying not to not to call anybody not not to throw shade i guess is what the kids are saying sure. <laughs> but if you look at something like stormfront from from butcher okay mm -hmm. stormfront is very much a first novel mm -hmm. it it has some some big flaws but it, it also has enough to <sighs> he was able to develop say the characters and get enough of the plot and, I, and i'd say the the probably the biggest flaw is the plot but the characters are so strong and well developed and so much personality that it carries through all of those flaws and mm -hmm. i only hope that's where we're at that yeah. if anybody goes yeah it's flawed but man i love your characters because that'll get you through a lot i mean even look at the original star wars new hope okay the characters carry that movie it's a basic plot there's not a lot there but you had some some very good actors and some new faces and and very very strong characters and those characters are the ones that we fell in love with and we want to keep seeing what happens so i hope that our next one is received as like oh that one's really really good you know well, it's extremely I mean, polished and we love these characters and <laughs> they're developing and the plot got better and the and you know mm -hmm. what any flaws that i had previously that i saw previously uh, you know i don't even pay attention to anymore that's where i want to be and i mean i don't want to i i don't know i i i don't want to contradict you but you can i also don't want to no cuz cuz i mean you're not wrong of course every piece has flaws right yeah. but i also I don't know. I think it's a good book. I, oh, I, I, too. I, I think Gunpowder is a good book. I People have been the vast majority of the criticism that I saw about it was was people saying it doesn't read like a John Ringo book. Um, and there's a reason for that. Yeah, John Ringo is the it's his world. He's the senior author on it. But he did not he did not write the book. You and I wrote the book, you yeah. know, and that was and that was that was the intent from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, now he contributed, he, he oh. gave us, um, you know, editing suggestions and, and, and helped us polish it and gave us, um, um, gave us input along the way is probably the best way to put it. Um, right. so it definitely has John Ringo in it. Um, but, but, you know, the 97% of the words in that book came out of, you know, either my fingers or yours on the keyboard. Right. So, right. Right. so that's the reason why it doesn't read like John Ringo. Cause it's it wasn't him telling the story yeah and um, it's funny because you don't hear people saying oh you know uh, the the monster hunter memoirs that john wrote for larry wrote with larry because i know larry did do a lot of, of mm -hmm. work on that they go oh it it doesn't sound like larry well yeah there's a reason for that sure the, it sounds I mean, more like john <laughs> that's a slightly different situation though oh yeah big john time but, are both big names right, right, right. But, i mean what i'm saying so. is that you know Okay, so let's use Jason as an example. No one's going to come out and say Jason's book that he's writing with Larry, the Monster Hunter memoir that he's mm -hmm. writing with Larry. Mm -hmm. it, oh, this doesn't sound like Larry. Well, yeah, no kidding. It's Jason. It's yeah. it's got Jason all over it because he's going to do. You know, that's that's kind of the senior author thing. Is that the the senior mm -hmm. author goes, okay, this is part of my world. It fits a certain 
set of requirements that are in this world, especially mm -hmm. if it's established sandbox. Mm -hmm. And but no, the voice is yours. And that's how it was when when John wrote Prince Roger with um, yeah. with David Weber. Ninety, he says himself, ninety percent of the words were his. Yeah. You know, Weber just had input. Yeah. Um, so anyway, Which I, is how like it should I, be. But you're right. Yeah, right. Right. I mean, that's most the whole of the point. comments are like, I was expecting a John book and this wasn't a John book. It's like, hi, did you see the big names underneath it? Mine's the longest. It says Christopher L. Smith. There's a reason why I went with that professional name. It gives me 16 letters over everybody else. <laughs> but they always have to be smaller to fit. It, it's smaller, but long. That's what he said. Mark the tape. Cut it. <laughs> It's smaller, oh but it's longer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Whatever you got to tell yourself, bud. <laughs> I have a lightsaber. <laughs> oh man. It's a really nice one too. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. Um I won't I won't show you my lightsaber. But we're working on the sequel. That's the other point I wanted to get to is yeah. that we are we are actively writing the sequel. Well, not right this second, but yeah in this time frame so um and i'm excited about it i think it's gonna be fun i think it's gonna be good i so. do too uh i had some things come to me the other day as i was like drearily doing my day job and, and trying mm -hmm. not to you know lament my fate <laughs> <laughs> no no i love my day job a lot <laughs> um anyway uh so yeah it Real quick, the thing about my day job is I've been doing it for 20 years, so I can do a lot of it in my sleep without a whole lot of thought, which yeah. is great because I can sit there and do the the physical work that I need to do and think about other stuff and just be mm -hmm. on autopilot and like an hour mm -hmm. later go, oh, I'm done. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> great. But um, so, yeah, I had I had a couple of things come to me the other day and it's like and it's not much. It's literally like four words. I'm not kidding. It, okay. It's like four words, okay. but they're, they're poignant words, or at okay. least very important as to who says them and who he says them to and who he says them about. Okay. All right. Well, I can't wait to hear. Okay. Them. Five words. Sorry. It's five words. <laughs> okay. It's five words. If it's but not it has spoilery, to... say no. it now. Well, okay. Without giving too much away. Yeah. Just say the five words. Tell Jay he was right. Sounds promising. Yeah. And it has to do with the scene that you and I were talking about and okay. things, things that happen. Yeah. I'm excited. And I'm excited. I think I know where you're, I think I know where this is in context and who. who right. Says it. And, <laughs> and who says them yeah. is, is really important. Yeah. But you know, like I said, without giving too much away. No, you're good. That's exciting. <laughs> I'm, I'm excited. Oh, that's fun. Um, so what else you got? What else are you working on these days? Um, it, little snippets of things here and there. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, I know it, I've, I've thrown some things at you a couple of times that just kind of hit me that I had to get through. Mm -hmm. Um, that, that particular character has not spoken up in a while, but I think he's more of a current event kind of guy. Mm -hmm. So I think he's, I think you'll have a few things to say here recently. I, I know yeah. we can't go into a whole lot of it, but, um, current world events may have sparked something inside him. So that particular character may have a few things to say. Yeah. Um, nothing set in stone, nothing that it, it may never, ever see the light of day. But um, Tony, if you're watching, I am thinking about it, though. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, Rob, Rob Hampson and I have kicked around some ideas and uh, he I know he's got some stuff going on that he's working on right now. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, with the sequel, he and I, you know, you and I. But um, Rob and I have a couple ideas about a, let's just call it a heist book, kind of an Ocean's 12 kind of thing going on. Very cool. Yeah. But set about 100 years in the future involving an AI and uh -huh. et cetera, et cetera. So that could be, that could be interesting. We're hashing out some details, but I think we've got some good characters and we've got some good plot ideas for that. Mm -hmm. um, what was the other one? Damn. Um, Seth Bailey and I. Uh, I, and I know Seth's working on book four. So Seth, if you're watching, this isn't a huge rush. Don't worry, man. I'm not putting any pressure on you, but I know he <laughs> wanted to do a, a collaboration where it's more like a uh, East Texas noir kind of thing. Oh, I love it. I love and it. yeah, just a lot of gunplay, a lot of, you know, yeah. Harley Davidson, Marlboro man, Josie Wales kind of stuff going on, but Seth, more of a modern day. 
Seth sent me a phenomenal story for uh, No Game for Nights. Yeah. The noir anthology. It is by far the darkest story in the anthology. But it's I need to so read it. Good. He it's he good. sent me a copy of it. He's like, man, when you get a chance, take a look. And I, I've I've been dying to read it, but it's also one of those things where my brain doesn't like to. I don't like to distract. Okay, that's not the yeah. right thing to say. I get distracted easy. Yeah. If I sat down and read Seth's story, I'd feel like I was cheating on not doing what I'm supposed to be doing. So it that doesn't mean I did what I was supposed to be doing. <laughs> I'm just saying it would feel like cheating. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. No, it's good. It's really good. Seth, the, yeah. you and Seth would make a, I, I feel like your two styles would, would go really well together. That would be awesome. And I, I went up for Seth's birthday bash last year, uh, uh -huh. June, I believe. And, it, and he and I were, were kind of talking about some stuff. And uh, Seth is one of those guys that I, I haven't known as well as I wanted to Yeah, That's up until the last two or three years. And then he yeah. and I got a lot closer to the point where, you know, I'm usually up in his area every couple of months for work. And if I've, if I've got the no kidding time i would try to make the time to go by and say hey to him at the very least so yeah. unfortunately i haven't been able to hold myself for that promise and i've only seen him in person a couple of times but man we had we had a really good time at his birthday just spent three days hanging out drinking some whiskey and you know shooting some guns and, and eating some barbecue and that was yeah that was it it was fun it was yeah, great he's good he's a great dude and i love him to death seth is um so that's one of the people that like I feel like we're really good friends and I've never met him in person. Um he, all of our interactions have all been online, but in the you know, in the context of of working together, um, you know, and comparing notes about writing and um comparing notes about um, you know, Seth served in the army and and um, you know, comparing notes about his service and my service and and you know. What is it? What, what does it mean to be a combat veteran? And you know, like all of that stuff. Um, yeah. It's uh, it's just yeah. He's 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 one of one of my favorite people that I have never met in person. <laughs> and and he is about as east Te northeast Texas as they come. Yeah, he yeah. is one hundred percent. I love East Texas. Give me I know he's doing like a web series on it. Right? He is. Yeah, yeah, it's he awesome. is. It's like and where he lives. East Texas, I always considered like Bayou country. So, mm -hmm. you know, Houston is East Texas, Nacogdoches um, and Lufkin and all up and down that area. That's that's about as East Texas as you can get until I went to Athens to mm -hmm. visit Seth. Athens, Tyler and Longview. I have I have changed my mind. <laughs> that's as East Texas as that's you can East get. Texas. That's peak East Texas. Yeah. OK. The, the Bayou right. country is basically West Louisiana. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. All right. No, All right. Athens is definitely East Texas. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of scary. Um, I had, I had my own Hunter S. Thompson moment. I don't know if you guys have <laughs> ever read Hunter S. Thompson writing okay. Tom Wolf about, he was either the bonfire, of the vanities or, uh, the Kool-Aid acid test. He had just finished reading it and he, Hunter S. Thompson was at a waffle house, I think in Louisville. Uh huh. Going out to his car occasionally to do bumps off of his keys, uh -huh. cocaine. For those who don't know, he did a lot of drugs. Mm -hmm. But he actually wrote this in his letter to Tom Wolf. Tom, I'm sitting here. I'm reading your book, and between bumps of cocaine off my keys and the waitress looking at me like I'm crazy, I gotta say this is a great thing. And he wrote this whole letter. It was probably like a two thousand word letter, you know, uh -huh. two or three pages to Tom Wolf. He's like, all right, I'm back from the car again. So my my Hunter S. Thompson moment didn't have me doing the drugs, but I'm in a diner in West Texas that was formerly a Waffle House. <laughs> a Waffle House went out of business. Yeah, wow. That don't happen. Nope. And it was converted into a diner. Yeah. Run by, we're assuming, a family because some of them looked similar. Okay. Of possibly meth heads. And we're there at two o'clock in the morning and, you know, it's like, oh my God, this is it. I'm either going to die or I'm <laughs> going to have a great story. It's two o'clock in the morning. I'm getting a hamburger, fresh, fresh French fries that I just watched the girl pull out of the hot grease with a rubber glove. Oh my That's God. It. She put on a rubber glove to pull the ham, the French fries out of the hot grease and Yikes. didn't flinch. 
Yikes. Yeah. The waitress yeah. that took our order, out of the three people that were there, there was the cook, who was definitely a felon. Uh-huh. <laughs> no kidding. This guy uh-huh. was like, yeah, I can handle anything that comes along, including this job. Yeah. The mother, who was our waitress, who seemed to have a hard time stringing two words together. Uh-huh. Tweaker doesn't quite cover it. Mm. I think she would have to go down a stage to, to not be a tweaker. Mm. Yeah. And then the daughter, who is the one pulling on rubber gloves to pull fresh french fries, fries out, out of the deep fryer. It's like, good gracious. Yeah. Burger like... was great, though. Don't get me wrong. The food was really good. <laughs> well, that's a great experience. So compliments <laughs> to the con. Yeah, right? He was right. He could handle anything. Your that guy could handle anything. He's like, no I cooked problem. in prison for 500 inmates and didn't get shanked. That's I right. can handle a burger and fries. Apparently. <clears throat> Apparently. So yeah, that was my Hunter S. Thompson moment. I was just like <laughs> losing my crap. And I was like, Seth, Seth, Seth. <laughs> yeah, man, ain't this place great? It's like, there's three of us in here. <laughs> the waitress <laughs> isn't talking to us. She's not talking to the staff. Who is she talking to? <laughs> <laughs> so um, uh, what's your con schedule like this year? Where, where are you, you going to be? Right now I am planning on I'm going to Liberty Con. Mm-hmm. Most definitely, because we haven't mm-hmm. been in two years, and I gotta go. I gotta go to see my family. Mm-hmm. And uh, Dragon Con, I've made hotel reservations for Dragon Con. Oh, where are you staying? Well, technically at the Double Tree. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Unofficially, <laughs> officially right. at the Double Tree next right. to the West. Unofficially end. on which unofficially floor you possibly on. on a couch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's that sounds like dragon con yeah stairwell bench i mean hopefully not the stairwell no, just... no 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 <laughs> well it depends if i have to if i have to try to climb up the stairs again 16 floors because the elevators are too full and i just kind of pass out and people leave me that's fine i, I understand <laughs> it happens you know leave him we've got to keep going yeah 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 <laughs> soldier on soldier on soldier on no man I... left behind <laughs> <laughs> He's too fat. I can't carry him. <laughs> Strip his cosplay off. It'll be fine. Right. You, can, you can do it. You can do it. Loot the body. Take his wallet. What? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> <His badge. laughs> oh, oh, yeah. The badge is worth more than that. Yeah. Yeah, man. If well, we take his badge, we don't have to worry about it. <laughs> Security yeah, right? will get him. Yikes. So, yeah, uh, I'm planning on <laughs> We just my- fixed the glitch. <laughs> We take his badge security and boot him out. <laughs> oh man! I don't know, man. There's some guy passed out on the stairs. Doesn't have a badge. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it's uh, Dragon Con is is definitely on my list too. Um, yeah. I uh, I've I've really missed it for the last three years. Um, you know, with being here, and then of course they didn't even have it in 2020. So, yeah. or they had it virtual, which was cool. Um, it was kind of fun to participate in the virtual panels, but I mean that's. It's not Dragon Con. Dragon Con is like the all-consuming sensory overload. You know, I've yes. entered another planet for a five-day weekend, and I never want to leave. But I better yeah. leave because I'm probably going to die if I stay any longer. You know? Virtual <laughs> Virtual Dragon Con does has a definite end time. It's like yes. it's ten o'clock. It's time for Virtual Dragon Con to be over. Enjoy your yeah. next six hours of Dragon Con TV. Right. Real Dragon Con is it's ten o'clock. Take the kids inside. Yeah. Well, let's go see what we can find. You know, lock them yeah. up. Yeah. Children, do not yeah. leave this room. Children, time for a movie. Here you go. Exactly. Here's your cell phone. If you have an emergency, call mom. Yep. I love Tonight you. You're I watching the Lord you. of the Rings trilogy uncut. Right. Right. <laughs> I will see you in six hours Two when days. I come back. Six hours. <laughs> oh, Lord yeah. No, I am. Um, yeah, I'm very excited about Dragon. You know, what's funny is uh, my oldest, you know, now that she's 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 19. So she's, you know, legally an adult. She's like, Mom, now that I'm an adult, can I go to Dragon Con? I'm like, yeah, sure. Go to Dragon Con. That'll be Talk awesome. She's like, yeah. really? I'm like, I am not getting you a room and I'm not getting you a membership. You will have to go on your own. But yes, you can come to Dragon Con. <laughs> Good luck getting a room. <laughs> That's right. She's like, Mom, why wouldn't you get me a room? I'm like, honey, girl, you don't know what you're asking. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, people shank each other. We don't call it the Hunger Games for nothing. 
No, that's why I'm unofficially staying at the double tree. <laughs> double tree. They had rooms. That's right. I could get in. You could get in. You can yeah. technically, for people who are watching, technically you can get into the Hilton. It's going to cost you five hundred dollars oh, a night yeah. because they are not. It's like, yeah, we'll we'll give you rooms, but they're mm -hmm. not at the con rate. Mm -mm. We only do the con mm -hmm. block, and the con block's full. You have to wait until people's credit cards get declined. That's right. Yeah, that's right. So. Which, uh, to be fair, I was I was talking with uh, another friend um, about that. Um, she was talking about the Marriott, but to be fair, that's that's a fairly that's a fairly good course of action. Like your your odds are not terrible that you're going to get a room. Um, based on a, a credit card cancellation because there's right. several that come open every year that do that so yeah yeah but you know it's like okay i can i'm, I'm looking around it's like well i can stay at the double tree the double tree is 300 feet away from the weston yeah yeah i know i'm okay. I'm, staying, I'm staying at the aloft and i'm using points to do so. right yeah, and, and that's yeah. that's what I was looking at the Hilton stuff for. The mm -hmm. difference in points was fifty thousand points for all five days for the Double Tree to two hundred and ninety one thousand points at the Hilton. Yeah, for yeah. all five days. That's insane. Yeah, well, we used to we used to use points to stay at the Westin, and then right. we stopped being able to do so because DragonCon bought the entire hotel block hotel as the block, and so oh. so if it's in the block, you can't use points. For it because right. it's already considered sold. You can only use points for unsold rooms. So Damn. crazy. Yeah. I know. I know. I was bummed. I was like, oh, I like I like the Weston, but right. I also like the Aloft. The Aloft is a it's a it's a cute little hotel. It's it like is. steps from the Hyatt, um, it across the street from the America's Mart. It's it is my I believe it to be the most advantageously placed of the overflow hotels. Yeah, and I've stayed there before too. And yeah. it's it's a loft is a loft. So it's like all the uncomfortable, quirky furniture downstairs that no one ever sits in unless <laughs> they absolutely have to. Because right. how do you how do you sit in a chair that's shaped like a Q? Yeah, it's just trendy. <laughs> yeah. But the rooms the rooms are fine. They're but they're fine. They're, yeah. they're small, but they're fine. And no, they're great. Yeah. At, so. Last couple of times I had to stay out of town, I stayed at one because they were actually the best rate around. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's like all the all the hotels in the area were like 150 to 300 dollars, and Aloft was like, "Hey, 100 bucks, and you get two free drinks." Yeah. It's like okay. Yeah. <laughs> no. It's like sure. I'll go be a hipster for a couple of days. It's fine. Well, that's cool, where's man. My, where's my vape and hoverboard? I know, right? I'm excited to see you at Dragon Con. That should be fun. I don't know yet if I'm going to make Liberty Con. It, it kind of depends on when I get a flight back. Yeah. Um, which I could hopefully find out next month, but I I have a room and I have a reservation for Liberty Con, or I have a reservation and I have a membership for Liberty Con, and I'm I, hoping that I'm able to make it. Um, I will be there. So yeah. if you're not there, I could always I could always play you as emergency holographic, not really Casey Ezel. It wouldn't be the first time. <laughs> <laughs> Although I, I have to borrow Kathy's corset again. So right. And, and, yeah. So. Give props to Kathy. She did a great job on my makeup. She had she the did. corset. I looked fantabulous. Yeah, yeah. So in, it's for here's the background for everyone's going. What the hell are they talking about? <laughs> Why um, is Chris cross dressing? What the right. hell is going on? In 2015, wow. um, I couldn't go to Dragon Con, um, and so Chris went and represented me at the Bain Road show. Oh no, 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 no. This is better than that. Oh well, by because all means. we had a bet. The, this started out as I might be able to go, Casey. If you yeah. go, if you're able to pull this off, I will cosplay you. Oh. And then it turned into I can't go. It's like, yeah. well, I'm going to cosplay you anyway. <laughs> That's right. That's right. But I do remember you went to the the Bain Road Show because you talked about um, Black Tide Rising. Um, and you were wearing a corset and uh -huh. a kilt and you uh -huh. had like combat uh, boots. And, and boots and you had an H on your forehead for emergency I, holographic yep. case. Ezel. I had the holographic shiny H because mm -hmm. and I you had, you were wearing a crush cap. Cause I, I, I had a crush cap. cap a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Odd, yeah. odd occurrence or odd coincidence the night before. Um, if anybody is familiar with red dwarf, the hologram, character had a big shiny silver h on his mm -hmm. forehead and there was a guy walking around the night before the bane road show at dressed as cosplaying as this character rimmer yeah and he had 
a bag of shiny holographic H's because he was handing them out to people so they could be emergency holographic people. And I was like, this is perfect. And so <laughs> I stuck it on my forehead and walked in in the middle of Tony, John, and Mike Williamson on a panel mm-hmm. sitting there talking about whatever book that was coming up at the time. And John hit the floor. Mm-hmm. He, he just cried. immediately he was laughing so hard. He was laughing yeah. so hard. Mike Williamson lost composure, which I don't see Mike Williamson lose composure very often. Nope. And even better, Tony lost composure. <laughs> and she never loses her composure. Which I've never seen except for that. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, yeah. Tony, of course, re- and it went in reverse order to regain composure. Yeah. Tony, yeah, yeah. Tony got back first immediately, back on track. I mean, 10 seconds tops. Williamson took a good 30 seconds to kind of get to the point where he wasn't just snort laughing every once in a while. Mm-hmm. John took a good minute to get off the floor. Yeah. Um, you know, it was even better that I walked in on Doc's arm. Mm-hmm. So- <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh man. Our misspent youth. <laughs> <laughs> of six years ago. <laughs> hey. We've grown so much. <laughs> Uh, well, it's good to talk to you. It's good talking to you. Um, too. We just got a couple minutes left. So yep. um, tell people where they can find you, where they can find your work. Like my day job or, <laughs> oh, you mean my actual, oh, my, my fun job. <laughs> Sorry, my, my day job. You can find me trapped Chris, underneath a bar. Chris, I hate to tell you this, but we're fucking professionals here. <laughs> people pay us to do what we do. Tell them how they can do that. <laughs> and that my friends is the essence of most of our conversations <laughs> Casey's like the sister I never had <laughs> that I also don't fight with that's the other thing too she's okay so she's more like my my cousin <laughs> that we haven't seen that we get along with really well because <laughs> if she was my sister we'd probably be at each other's <laughs> Because I have kids, <laughs> more than one. I have kids too, <laughs> and, but yeah. mine are closer together. That's true. That's very true. My my two oldest are roughly the same age difference as you and I. Yeah. And I have seen what happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like Perfect. best friends, worst enemies. All yeah. of a sudden, all now long. they're best friends again. Oh yeah. yeah. So anyway, sorry. Uh, to to answer the question. Yes. properly and correctly as i should have edit that part out by the way um you can find me at uh amazon of course you can mm-hmm. find me i think at bain.com mm-hmm. mm-hmm. uh i think i'm in there as christopher l smith uh i hope every I, i've tried to catch all the inconsistencies but i should be christopher l smith in everything i think every once in a while a chris smith sneaks in there because whoever was doing the table of contents knew you knew me too well yeah <laughs> that asshole <laughs> smith <laughs> it hasn't been found yet but i'm sure it's coming uh but you can find me on amazon.com <laughs> under christopher l smith uh, as we were discussing prior to the stream starting there is another christopher l smith out there but he writes non-fiction i yeah. don't yeah so uh it, it, zombies science fiction westerns you're good to go medical stuff politics whatever else that i think he's got two or three nonfiction books if they're more than about 800 pages that's not me <laughs> that's the other guy feel free to buy his stuff guy. too though I yeah, mean, yeah buy his stuff i'm sure he's a great guy i've had a couple of discussions with him on that's what into. <laughs> yeah it's like um you don't write zombie fiction just in case yeah. you're not aware uh but that's me so yeah no, he seems like a decent guy he's put up with me messaging him on goodreads a few times going uh, can you talk to somebody about getting your name off my page because <laughs> when i click on the link it goes to you not me right yeah 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 so like i said decent guy yeah sure so sure. far so good Maybe he's getting a bump in sales. I hope the best for him. <laughs> we should invite him to Liberty Con as like a science guest. One we year. really should. We really should. It'd be like the Jack Clemens movie. thing. The Jack Clemens that the works Jack for Clemens NASA. Thing. And then right. the Jack Clemens that everybody knows is Jack Clemens. Like, right. You don't work for NASA. Shut up. 
<laughs> don't I? <laughs> Maybe I do. <laughs> what, do you just yell at the rocket and it goes into space to get away from you? Is that it? Oh, that's funny. Yeah. You go fly now. I go fly now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, yeah. Don't explode. That's good, stuff. that's good stuff. All right, man. Well, thanks again for coming on. Um, My pleasure. It's yeah. good talking to you. It's good talking to you. It's good talking to you. Um, so yeah, check out Chris's books. Check out mine and Chris's book, this one. Uh, this is available on Amazon, on Bain.com, in bookstores, wherever. And um, in both hardback and mass market paperback. Um, so yeah, Correct. something for everyone. So and... Just real quick, before we go, I just want to say about the cover. I do remember getting having a discussion with Tony about it. She goes, are you okay with having the hot chick flanked by two hot guys lots of muscles etc cetera, etc cetera. and it's like well i'm i'm okay with it but i mean we're gonna have the dragon right she goes well of course we're gonna have the dragon it's like okay yeah yeah well tony do you think this is going to appeal to the demographic and sell more books she goes absolutely it's like yeah do it yeah 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 <laughs> is there any way we can get cheerleaders or strippers on there no <laughs> all right no but we did uh we did get a corset um which we got a corset I, and I, dragon tattoo I haven't confirmed this, but I, I have the feeling Tony put that in there for me. And I thank her very, very I much. I think she did. I think she <laughs> so, did. I shouldn't say Tony. She's obviously not the artist, but I think, but um, yeah, she she obviously has quite a bit of input on the cover design, if not all right. the input. So um, I, I think part of it too was, and this is absolutely dead serious, cosplayability, I think also came into it Yeah. to where this is not a difficult outfit for either or any of anybody involved here. Yeah. Chuck's on the, my right. Jasmine's in the center and Garmin's on the yeah. left. Yeah. That if anybody actually did want to play these characters, it would not be difficult to find this yep. stuff at a dime store. And we would love you so much if you did. Oh my God. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> and just a hint, if anybody ever wants to cosplay Jay, just think Ben Rumson or um, Kid Shaleen from, uh, or uh, Lee Marvin, sorry, mm -hmm. Lee Marvin from Cat Baloo or yeah. Lee Marvin from Painter Wagon. Yeah. If Lee Marvin was about 5'4 in black. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Go buy our book. Uh, go check out Chris's other work available on Amazon um, and on Bain.com. Um, and uh, where else? Social media stuff. You're on Facebook, right? Do you do you do much Facebook these days? I I am less on Facebook since the beginning of 2020 and a okay. virus of unknown origin. Right. It was it. I decided to kind of take a break from it for about six okay. months, but I am still there, so I still get notifications. So. Hit me up if yeah. uh, if you have any questions or anything like that. But yeah, occasionally I do kind of do a quick doom scroll for about ten minutes and make sure that you know everything's just as bad as I thought it was when I left. <laughs> That's what my it's kind of like. Said. It's kind of like public radio, right? <laughs> commercial radio. It's like local commercial radio plays the same songs they did twenty years ago when I quit listening to commercial radio. Yeah. Facebook seems to be the same way. It's like, yeah. oh look, it's just as bad as it was six months ago when I left. Why am I doing this again? <laughs> quick, 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 quick. And notifications clear. We're good. Um, yeah. I am technically on Twitter, but I'm not really on Twitter. Not active. So, sure. Yeah. yeah I'm not I, active I will, before, again, yeah. I get push notifications. So if you twit me something, I will twat you back. I don't think that's how that works. Mark the tape. <laughs> Mark the tape. All right, guys. Sweet. Thanks for hanging out with us. Um, check out the description for, for links below. And um, yeah, thanks, Chris, for, for coming and hanging out with me and my friends. My and, pleasure. It's uh, been fun. Uh, we'll see you guys later. So um, I'm not sure who my next guest Oh man, that makes me sound so fancy. My next guest, yeah, I'm not sure who my next uh, video will be. With. Um, um, Our next guest is right. Yeah. Musical number, play them in. Right, right, yeah. No, that's um, I'm I'm not about that life yet. Maybe, maybe <laughs> one day. So. All right, um, but yeah, this has been a blast, and um, we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Night. <laughs>